Hi, I'm Jamie. Uh, today I'm having a little look at ZBrush Core Mini, a uh, recent software from Pixelogic. Uh, this video is not sponsored, so it's just my opinion on this new tool. So downloading and installing the software is a bit of a headache, just basically the downloading part, because the website that's set up for you to actually get the software from, because it's free, it sort of reads like a sales pitch where you sort of keep clicking on buttons that says, oh yes, I want that thing, please give it to me now. And it's just very frustrating to go through that process when you're just trying to get this free thing that they're giving out for everybody. It doesn't feel like you're being given it, it feels like you're about to pay for it. Installing is all fine, um, and then you should be good to go. The interface is quite good. Uh, it's a nice stripped down, sort of really basic version of the regular ZBrush interface. It's very clean and it's very easy to quickly see uh, what's there and what you actually need to use. There's no hidden menus or anything like that, so it is really quite easy to just get in and uh, get going. And so in the background, I've got a little sped up clip of me having a little go, just doing some shapes, making sort of a basic head and just trying out the tools as much as I can. So I think I spent about an hour and I had the basic forms in pretty quick and then I just kept sort of going over everything again. And then at the end, I think I decided to use the uh, Make Hook tool, try that out and uh, put some funny horns on top of the head. With the brushes, they are all quite good. Didn't have any issues uh, with the brushes themselves. I did notice that when you're smoothing, and so when you hold shift to smooth, that I mean, it was actually decimating the mesh uh, whilst you're working. So, you know, you can do a fairly detailed area and then try and smooth it out and you'll lose some of those details if you're not careful. So that sort of makes me think that this software is not intended for detailed sculpting. I mean, you can sort of get your big and your medium details in, but past that, you're gonna to need to be going somewhere else. With the brushes, you can't customize any of them. So like I'm used to in Blender, you can change uh, the curves for the brush, and you can change textures and all that sort of stuff. You've got none of that in uh, ZBrush Core Mini. It's all just, you can change the size and you can change the strength. And you can pick out of, I think it's the eight brushes that they've got there for you. When it comes to actually getting started sculpting, you can't import any models. So you either have to choose from the sphere or you can choose from the cube that they've got that's got like a, a stone texture on it. It seems to be sort of projected on from all angles. And, it, you know, it, it's nice that there's a sort of a textured option, but I don't know how well that exports into other software. Speaking of exporting, uh, you've got your regular object obj exporter which works great but it says it's for exporting for 3d sculpting but it's an obj file so you can just take that into pretty much any 3d software and so i tested that out taking into blender and it yeah, works just fine the other exporting options are actually really really interesting and something that i'd like to see something along these lines come to other software because what they've done is basically it, they've put the mesh uh, information, the actual data, into what's kind of like a QR file. And so, you know, those things that you scan with your phone and they've put all that information into an image file. So you can either have, say, a non-animated image with a picture of the model in the middle, which so you can see what you're going to be importing and then all the data around it or you can get an animated GIF, which has along the bottom, it's got this little animated thing of all the dots going past. And so the main portion of the image is just the the model that you'll be importing. And then you've got all these dots sort of moving along the bottom. It looks all matrixy, kind of cool. But then you can import that file into the ZBrush Core Mini. I don't think they've expanded the importing into ZBrush yet, but I'm expecting that they will, because obviously you want to nice easy way to move models around and yeah so then you've got say on your computer you've got a bunch of files that are just picture files and you can see oh I want to grab this model over here of a plant and move it in and work on that and then it's, you know it's a really nice way of working around limitations in Windows and stuff where it's you know not necessarily you can't expect Windows to read every different file type that it comes across and be able to sort of display what's going on. I know when you've got Blender installed, you do get a preview of the Blender file in Windows. So this is sort of an extension of that that could work basically across any, any software. 
When I was working, uh, I was using my old Wacom Intros 4, but it's always worked fine in Blender, never had any issues with that. But I did seem to have issues with moving around the viewport in ZBrush Core Mini. I'm not sure if it's a general ZBrush problem or if it's the using the old tablet or something like that. Uh, but I did find it kept snapping, and so whenever it sort of came to an almost 90 degree, it definitely would snap then. That seemed intended. But then, especially when zooming and panning, the snapping got way out of control and it would sort of zoom and snap at the same time when I was panning. I mean, it'd either zoom really in or zoom really out and then I'd get lost on my model. I and mean, it was really frustrating and it like, it'd consistently happen in a row and then I'd be able to sort of get out of it and it would be fine again. So that was probably the major frustration I had whilst using ZBrush Core Mini, other than the inability to go as fine in detail as I would probably have wanted to, but because of, basically because of the tools and because of the smooth brush decimating everything. So when I wanted to go in and add more detail in an area, then it just sort of, it wasn't what I expected. But yeah, the feeling of the sculpting was great. So I've tried out ZBrush before. I've done the trial and quickly each time gotten lost. I tried it a couple of times. Each time I've gotten way lost in the interface and not really known how to sort of find the tool that I wanted to use and then to adjust settings on that sort of. I could do one or two tools and then once I got past that it got weird. I didn't understand sort of the ZBrush way of working with different models and they call them tools or something like that. And that was, it's very alien and very confusing and it's sort of, you know, people say learning Blender is hard while well, learning ZBrush is like going to a different planet. But the, the experience that I do have of working in ZBrush was that the sculpting on the actual model was really smooth, almost like really, really wet clay. And I definitely got that same sort of feeling when working in ZBrush Core Mini. So it was, it was, you know, it was a generally positive experience when working with the brushes once I sort of was able to get the viewport position where I wanted. And that was sort of became an issue when I wanted to when I couldn't get the viewport to go where I wanted to, I ended up working at an angle or at a zoom distance that I wasn't intending to work at, so it made it more difficult to work. One major, major drawback that I have found out about is the license. So it's a strictly non-commercial license, which means you can't make any money with the models that you're making it. I don't know how far that license extends outside of ZBrush, if exported models they would consider, if you exported an OBJ and then 3D printed that and then sold that, I don't know how they'd feel about that. I don't know if you exported the OBJ to say Blender, worked on it more there and then sold the model, say on Sketchfab or something. I don't know how they would feel about that, but definitely the license does specifically say that it's strictly for non-commercial and it's strictly for educational purposes. So that leans me towards not even recommending anybody to use it because it's meant as an introduction to sculpting, but it's severely lacking in A, the amount of brushes and B, ability to customize those brushes. It severely lacks in the ability to go into finer detail in sculpting. It's very limited on actually the amount of polys that you can actually even use. So it does have the, it does have a couple of nice features, which is the decimating features where uh, you can, it, lets you pick which quality you want. I think it's, it's got high, medium and low, and it tells you how many polygons it's gonna to aim to reduce the model down to, which is nice and clear, but it doesn't specifically tell you the limit, which I think is only 750,000, which sounds like a lot, but if you wanna do a detailed sculpt, you can easily blast past a million. So my understanding is once you hit 750,000, you're not allowed to go any further and then you have to go and use those decimate tools, which in my experience worked fine. I did a very um, quick sort of scribble sculpt to get lots and lots of little creases in. And when I decimated that down, it did look fine, but I can't guarantee that that's gonna work every time. So with the license being the way that it is, I would just recommend that people just get into Blender. A, it's less of, the website is way less of a headache. Uh, B, once you actually as you become more um, competent of a user, you'll actually be able to uh, learn more about in-depth things with the tools. 
and all the brushes and how to customize them. And then you've got things like textured brushes, which lets you get, you know, those really fine details, all the, um, the pores in the skin and all the creases and all that sort of stuff. You, you just can't do that in ZBrush Core Mini. So unless you're willing to then invest in, obviously, ZBrush, I think they've got ZBrush Core and they've got ZBrush like Pro. And from what I can tell, ZBrush Core is pretty stripped down as well. And like, you don't really get a comparable amount of features even compared to Blender. So yeah, I'd just say stick with Blender, honestly. I would love to hear your thoughts if you have tried it out because mine was sort of mixed. Like there's some good stuff. Like I initially thought, oh, wow, this is really great. But the more I used it, the less I liked it. If you did try it out, yeah, definitely let me know. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to uh, click all your YouTube buttons. If you do want to keep up, I will be working on some tutorials for 2.83. I'm currently in the middle of that. I'm happy to be doing this kind of content as well. It sort of keeps things fresh. Sort of a talking to camera sort of thing. Talking about, you know, products that are in the 3D space. I'll be getting a, uh, a screen tablet soon. Um, so I'm possibly going to do a review on that. We'll see how I go. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you later.